All right, so let's jump into the center of our screen. So within this screen, we actually have similar buttons that we have up here, right, where we can hide and show these different panels. Uh, I'm in a storyboard right now, by the way, I've clicked on a storyboard, my main dot storyboard here. And at the bottom of the screen, you can see that I have a similar button like I have up here, and that will show and hide the left-hand panel within the storyboard. And this is basically the outliner. It's just showing you the different elements that exist within your storyboard. And this is where we'll do a lot of our selecting. So it's the easiest way to select something rather than trying to click around and find it on the screen. Additionally, at the bottom, we have the view as button. This is really important. You want to make sure your view as button matches the simulator that you're running. Uh, if you have an older machine, I would really recommend doing all of your work for iPhone 8s or iPhone 8 Pluses. 8 Pluses is kind of a good size to work with. Um, it's pretty close to the newer iPhone size. So I've changed my 8 Plus up here, but I also need to change it down here. So I'm going to go View As and change it to the iPhone 8 Plus, which I believe is this one. Yeah, 8 Plus. And I can click that button again to hide it. So that allows us to have the same thing happening here as whenever we run our simulator. Next to that, we have a zoom button, which will zoom us in and out, pretty self-explanatory. And then further to the right, we have constraint and alignment buttons. And these uh, are, are really tricky to use, but basically allow you to add elements and add constraints to them that you can then um, uh, use different devices and it'll keep your layout consistent or it'll keep things uh, looking good. So, you know, we're not going to get too deep into those until a little bit later, but basically if you click each one of these buttons, it pulls up different menus that you can use. Um, so let's switch over to a piece of code now so we can see what that looks like in here. So I'm going to click on my viewcontroller.swift and I have my code open. And it's a very simple interface. You don't really see much of anything except for the line numbers on the left-hand side. Uh, additionally, on the left-hand side, if we click, we have breakpoints, which we can turn on and off. Um, if you ever do this, I recommend deleting the breakpoint because if you're not positive what you're doing, uh, it does stop your code from running. At the top of the screen, we can see a what they call a breadcrumb trail which is basically showing you where you are within your application. So we're in the Patterns of App Design app, we're in the folder, and we're in a file called viewcontroller.swift, and we're in a method right now, we've clicked within here, called view did load. If I click outside of that, I can see I'm now in the class called view controller, and this is directly tied to that symbols navigator that we've used before. I'm gonna go back to my file navigator just because that's what I like to use. And if I click, I can actually move back and forth and select different files to open. So this is an easy way to open up files quickly, uh, or you can just use the left-hand side. So let's go back to our main.storyboard, and our main.storyboard view controller is linked to this viewcontroller.swift file. Uh, so basically the code in this viewcontroller.swift file is running whenever our viewer or our user encounters this main.storyboard. So if I want to edit both of those simultaneously, which this is a very, very common thing, I would use the assistant editor. If you don't remember, the assistant editor is up here in the right hand corner. And if I click it, it's going to open up a side panel. That side panel, now my screen's getting really crowded, that side panel is showing the Swift file that's directly linked to my currently selected uh, view controller. So I've just clicked within this white and I can see that pop up over here on the right hand side. So this is really great. I can see the code over here and the UI over here. Now obviously my interface is getting a little bit crowded so I'm just going to hide that panel. I don't really need the inspector so I'll hide that as well. And that's a little bit easier to work with. It's very common to work this way because we'll be often uh, placing objects. For instance, I'll show you right now a button in my scene and then we'll actually be linking those into the code over here. Now, if for some reason this, this gets unlinked, which actually right now, this looks like it is uh, not properly linked, I can click here and change what file is showing on this right-hand side. And I wanna go to automatic and then my viewcontroller.swift. Whenever I do that automatic, that's gonna link those two together. So if I close this, if I switch back to my standard editor 
and I open up my assistant editor again, it should go straight back to the same file. Once we have a bunch of different files in here, you may get some, some trouble over here on the right hand side. So just keep that in mind. I can click and change it to the correct interface. I'll show you again now that we have the correct one linked, how I can insert things and in directly from my interface into my code. And we'll get into that in uh, very shortly, probably in the next video actually. So uh, the assistant editor dynamically changes based on what you have selected. So if I select the app delegate, it's actually bringing up uh, a different kind of app delegate, same with the view controller, and we can manually select what shows up at different times. And we can do that really easily by holding down option whenever we click on a file. Whenever I hold down option and I click, it's going to open that on the right hand side or in my assistant editor. So I can open up my main.storyboard and then whatever I select normally with my left click uh, will open up on the left hand side. So if I want to open up my assets panel and let's say I want to open up my launch screen.storyboard, I just hold down option and click and it's going to open it in the right hand side. So I can go back to normal over here. I'm just going to click back on my main.storyboard. And now that we've gone through all of that stuff, uh, we're now ready to actually jump into our application. And what we're going to do is dive into building a really simple user interface.